Hey folks, Mike Shea here from SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish. Today is another exciting episode. Hey folks, Mike Shea here from oh SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish. Amateur is hour again. Um, today's another episode of Sly, Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep, where we go through the process of the Lazy Dungeon Master while looking at a particular game, in this case my Sunday uh, Tomb of Annihilation game, which I run at my friendly local game shop. Uh, hope you guys are having a good Sunday. I am having a, a great weekend. I saw Solo yesterday and uh, have been watching the uh, stream of many eyes throughout the weekend and very excited about the, the two new products. Hello, Gondolar. Uh, good to see you this morning. Um, yeah, they got some exciting products. Uh, Waterdeep, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which is a level one to five city-based heist adventure. And... Uh, Hey, Enrique, here for the mic, staying for the Shay. Sure, whatever brings you, man. Um, and of course, uh, the what do they what do they call it? The Undermountain, the Undermountain Adventure. I forget its title, but that looks really cool. I'm excited for both of those, and I think it'll be. Hey, Tilda the Wild is here. Good to see you as always. So, uh, if you guys have any thoughts about the stream of Many Eyes and these two new adventures, uh, we can talk about that, and we can also uh, go over my game. It's 10.43. I'm running late today. I would love to say it was because I'm really busy. The truth is, it's because I was playing Dark Souls, and I really want to beat the Taurus Demon. Um, nice overlay. Please post a tutorial. I did not. My tutorial is go find someone who knows how to make an overlay and pay them. That that was my tutorial and it worked. Uh, give me a moment and I'll. I... Wait, however, give me a second and I'll tell you who made mine. Um, Eric Volgaris, Eric Volgaris at uh, twitter.com. Hang on, I will paste it into my game notes here. Uh, who made the awesome overlay? Oh, that's the wrong one. That's my second. Uh, copy and pasting is awesome. There is your URL, Eric Vulgaris. Uh, what text editor am I using? Because this always comes up. Sublime. All right. That covers the fact that I always get. Um. Yes, Enrique. He is awesome. Uh, I uh, um, good good friend uh, Grant Ellis recommended him to me, and I sent him. And I had like no really good requirements and no idea what the hell I was doing. And uh, he was very handy. He sent me a whole bunch of different overlays, and I kind of asked for little tweaks here and there, mostly because I didn't know what the hell I was actually asking for, and and putting them into production was totally different. But um, now uh, I'm very happy with it, and I think it looks really cool. Um, and I even made a, uh, let's see. So I have this one, which is the game prep one. And then I've got scene two, which is looking at the Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, this is the uh, first cut at the layout draft. So if we ever want to talk about specific Lazy Dungeon Master techniques, I have the book right here. So, very handy. Ah, uh, so what the hell were you we talking about? Gaming prep and the like. Um, yeah, so I'm running late because I was playing Dark Souls uh, and I've got a game. So this will be about a 45 minute show, give or take. Um, our, oh, so I have notes from the last game too. So we can jump over to those. Uh, this last game was two weeks ago. I missed a game last weekend. Uh, too many people, Memorial Day, a lot of people were out. And um, so the last time we had a game was the 20th. Uh, I think, I think that's correct. Uh, they were back in Port Nyanzaru. They were kind of collecting themselves. Uh, we had a scene where uh, Aramag, the dragon turtle, destroyed a one of the th three pirate ships. The other pirate ship, the Emerald Eye, is owned now by the characters. The third ship is off. Uh, if you recall, in my game, these ships were captained by vampires. And my idea was that the vampire captain died and his uh, zombie horde, they, 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 the um, crew died as well when the sun came out and destroyed the, uh, you know, killed the vampire and sent the, the ship into disarray. 
So it started sailing into Port Nianzaru and Aramag destroyed it and he starts spitting zombies out onto the onto the beach and um, zombies start climbing out of the water and there's a great big zombie fight. And that was fun. It was a great big, you know, they had to fight a lot of dudes. Um, I ran it all theater of the mind with little little quick diagrams on a on a mat. And my, my group is pretty used to this. Although it wasn't, you know, it's always a little clunky. You know, it's never perfect to have 50, 70 zombie miniatures. Um, but they got the idea. That was fun. So then they, um, oh, I, I warned them about getting backup PCs. So now this, I think I did it right at the end of the next session. So they know now to have a second set of PCs for when they go into Omu and particularly when they go into the Tomb of Annihilation so that I don't have to worry about killing them. Um, what else? Uh, they prepared the ship. They had a nice seafaring montage. I don't think anything real exciting happened on the way back. They got back to Jakarta Bay remet their their people uh they see that now their fort is being built they met their old uh the people that they left in charge and um then there was a great bell and they were getting attacked by ghouls uh by the way they're all asleep right now so i don't want to wake them up uh, i don't know where all of them are uh I'm, we are currently fostering kittens we have three tiny little kittens and they're all here in my room somewhere they all hide the third is but if they wake up and start causing a commotion then i'll i'll show them to you guys who doesn't love kittens they're so cute they're tiny little things um and they seem to be just fine with me podcasting normally they sit and meow at me uh so that all went well um i, I think my only problem was that uh i ran two sort of big horde fights oh and they had some dinosaurs too but they took care of the dinosaurs real quick that's right and i pulled out one of the morden canaan uh death locks to attack them so it's like a death lock sort of a, you know, worshiper of a Sararak who is like, you're all going to die in the tomb, you idiots. And by the way, here's some undead dinosaurs for you to attack. And um, that was okay. I, actually, I'm not crazy about the Deathlocks in, in Morden Canaan's. Um, I'm, I, I think they're, they're, they're not sort of the... I, I guess there's a difference between them and like Flame Skulls, right? They're supposed to be sort of undead, but Flame Skulls just pour out damage and Deathlocks are all about their crazy Warlock stuff. And I'm not particularly good at running Warlock type on npcs because their their stuff is kind of quirky and you got to like read the spells it's not like they, th they fireball you roll a dex check and i'll roll 86 that's, that's easy to roll. so kind of two big fights if i had a if i had a recommendation myself from two weeks ago it would be don't run two large like uh, high number uh monster encounters instead you know do something else i don't know exactly but maybe dual assassins or something would be kind of cooler yeah. Um, and they have not yet gone back into the jungle. So they are uh they are now going to be heading back into the jungle. By the way, let me know if my mic is okay. I have a new sorry, I know I keep jumping around here. I have a new microphone stand with my Yeti. I'm sure I sound much better if I talk like this, but actually doing the whole show like this would be quite difficult. So I kind of just just push it just out of range. Pretty close. And I'm talking pretty close to it. Hi, John Four. How are you? I hope you're enjoying all the tomb, tomb, what is it? Stream of Many Eyes. Some exciting stuff. I know your friend and mine, James Intercasso, is one of the authors of uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which I think is awesome. Um, he's a great guy and uh, well deserved, well deserved credit and a hard, hard worker when it comes to that. So that's really cool. Two Jameses James Intercasso and uh, James Hayek. Uh, is also one of the co-authors of that. Very cool. Uh, so uh, people have asked, like, when we look at secrets, um, what secrets actually came up? So we can go here and take a look. Uh, as you recall, uh, let's go jump over just for a quick refresher for the steps of Lazy Dungeon Master preparation. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the draft layout of uh return of the lazy dungeon master i'm very excited we're, we're pretty close we're getting about nine new pieces of art to fill in some gaps you'll see you'll see some some gaps uh in here preparing for your game like this we're going to have some cool you know not not new art but we're going to use like covers from books to put in these different section headers way of the lazy dungeon master here's the checklist Review the character. So um, Lazy Dungeon Master has eight steps, although you can probably get away with fewer. We're going to go through the eight steps today, but but generally speaking, eight is actually kind of a lot for the Lazy Dungeon Master, but it was meant to be sort of inclusive and include 
steps that many people do and sort of the top to bottom. But the reality is, depending on your situation, you can usually cut more than one of these steps. Step one, review the characters. Who are the people that are actually playing in this game? Um, and what do they want and what are they interested in? We kind of seed our minds with the characters that we're aware of. Um, uh, uh, we're aware of what they're getting. I just hid my... Um, Create a strong start. Where is the game going to begin? What cool thing is going to happen that's going to sort of grab the attention of the players and sort of drag them back away from what their daily woes and their work week nonsense and bring them into Dungeons and Dragons? What's what's driving them now? And I think we're going to start with a red dragon. Uh, outline potential scenes. This one's kind of a loose one. I tend not to always do this, and you'll see when the notes. But sometimes it's good, like, well... If I'm getting lost about where they're going to go and what they're going to do, it's sort of nice to just sort of outline some loose scenes, get ready to throw them away. But just almost all of the step, all of the steps in the Lazy Dungeon Master preparation guide, the Lazy Dungeon Master checklist, is really designed to make you feel good about your game. If you feel good, if you feel prepared, if you're ready to sit down and run it, great. Sometimes you might feel really prepared and then sit down and go, "Oh my god, I have no idea what I'm doing." It's happened to me. It's probably happened to all of us. Um, and that's what these steps are held there to fill out. But they're mainly there to make you feel good about your game. So outline the potential scenes so that we have an idea where we're going. To find secrets and clues, uh, this is the bulk. This is the most important one, I think, of, you know, next to the strong start. I don't know. They're all pretty important. But reviewing the characters is important. Having a strong start is important. And defining secrets, secrets and clues are important. If I had to narrow it down to three of the eight, those would be the three. Um, what things will the characters discover while they are engaged in the game? And I usually come up with ten. Oh. One of the kitties is asleep, or is waking up. Um, I write down 10 secrets and clues, but I don't necessarily um, use them all. I usually use about half. I, I never really tracked it until people started asking, and now I've started tracking it, and it's about half. Look who there. Oh, there's a cute kitty. Um, Cash, a little white one. If you're gonna pick up her, oh, here she comes, coming over. All right, hang on, kitty time. Come here, little girl. That's sweet. Oh, look at this! Look at this one. Look how tiny she is. Say hello to everybody. You're on Twitch. Ow! Oh, claws. Oh. Ow. Hurts. You can't step on the keyboard, kitty. There's a cute kitty. Good kitties. Kitties on Twitch. Helping with the impact. He's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, secrets and clues. Yeah, I write down 10. I come up with about five. Fantastic locations. If I don't have any ideas, then I will um, come up with a few. And usually I like to, these days I like to randomly generate uh, one or usually one, just to have one on hand. But I'm running a published adventure, so I know where they're headed. They're headed to Omu. You know, they're at they're at the place. They're headed to either Omu or the um what? What is it? You don't like the ways ways of lazy dungeon map? Everyone's a critic. Uh so I kind of know that there's already fantastic locations in um Tomb of Annihilation. So I really don't have to um I don't have to do much. Uh outline important NPCs. Usually it's like if there are NPCs that I think they're gonna run into or ones that I know they're gonna go back to, I will take a look at that. Choose relevant monsters. I just usually try to have a few ideas of monsters that they're going to fight. Uh, again, the adventure sometimes takes care of this. And also I use random encounters, which means I, I don't like to prep those ahead of time. I like to, you know, it's sort of like baking in front of people. You know, you're like cooking at the table. And I, that, that idea of, um, uh, the idea of, uh, I get very distracted by kittens. Um, the idea of grabbing random encounter, random encounters and then building like a cool scene out of them at the table, uh, I enjoy. Some people don't like it, and that's fine. Either you can come up with encounters you think are cool, or you can roll beforehand, uh, or if you want, you can um, uh, you can uh, back by the cat again. Do that. So um, I like to bake at the table. Magic items, always good to say, like, what kind of magic items do your characters want? Uh, and but what do they have, too? Like, I gave away two intelligent, evil magic short swords, and that was a mistake. I forgot that I gave one in the previous week, so now they have two of these, and two different characters have intelligent, evil swords. 
I was dumb, but you kind of can't retcon it. You don't want to say like, I was actually supposed to be one sword. So you can make them like brothers or something and come up with a way to fix it. So uh, that is the eight steps. Um, so we're going to jump back. Uh, hey, look, Art. Yeah, a little bit about Lazy Dungeon Master and online play. I think you guys are going to like this book. I'm very excited about it. Um, I, I just can't wait to get this out there. Uh, this and the Lazy DM workbook too, which we're working on for hard. So let's get back to our game prep. Uh, so what secrets did they discover? Uh, they did not find out that the captain died. Uh, they do know about the zombies. So that's like a half of one. Um, they did find out that the Yuanti assassins wanted to kidnap Ogechi because he's in tune with the Ashodo. They did learn that. You want to have a Lair and Omu where they're working to bring forth Dendar the Night Serpent? I don't think they'd figure that out. Uh, the people of Omu lived in decadence on the backs of slaves. Uh, they don't learn much about Omu, actually. Ubtau turned his back on the people of Omu. These are all good ones. Uh, Omu and Omuians began to worship his, uh, worship spirit creatures called the Trickster Gods. The Trickster Gods led them from... They know about the Trickster Gods, but they don't, I think, know the full story. Trickster Gods were all killed uh, by a Sarak, right? Um... Every so often across the room, something happens that quickly changes the face of the land and the people. Uh, the coming of a Sarek was one such event. Uh, I, can't, I think I might have done this for my Wednesday game, but I didn't do it for my Sunday game. Uh, a Sarek murdered the trickster gods and used their power in one of his many soul-eating dungeons beneath Omu. A Sarek has a lich of incredible power, chooses not to become a god. Instead, he travels the multiverse. Uh, they didn't really learn a lot of these. So uh, I'm going to cheat since I'm low on time today. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of these secrets and clues, and I'm going to just paste them into the new notes. Uh, that's not how I typically do it. I typically throw them away and start over again. Uh, but since I'm reviewing them already, they're already going to be in mind. I'm probably going to write them again. Um, so uh, I might as well just, and I'll come up with a couple more. Uh, NPCs, Full Bladder, the Commander of the People, uh, the Cobalt Accountant. Uh, I have their names. I have them written down in my other, my other little book here. Um, and Raindrop. These are all good NPCs. We're going to just paste these right over. Again, I would not normally do this. Oh, look, I already did that. Uh, I would not normally just copy and paste from one set of notes to the next, uh, except for two facts. One, one, they haven't really run into them. And two, um, I'm running low on time. Uh, and then the Cloak of Protection, they did receive a Cloak of Protection. I don't remember how. Somebody gave it to them, I think. I think they got it from somebody at... Uh, Somebody in um, uh, Port Nine Zaru. Oh, there's the other cat. All right, we have all three. All hanging out. One's totally asleep. One of them's a troublemaker. One of them's named um, uh, Blue, Little Blue or Baby Blue, which is a ridiculous. I guess because he, he's got he's got blue eyes. And he picks on the other ones. Don't wake him up. What are you doing? Mean one. He's mean. He chases the other ones around and plays with them, but he plays rough and they don't like it and they slap him and he doesn't care. He's kind of a mean one. Now he's only about this big, so how much trouble can he cause? Uh, so I'm going to ask this question again. What magic items would they like? And what do they, what do they have? What do they like? Um, these, this is an important thing to track. Like Magic items are one of those things that matters a lot to players and that DMs control. So that's why it's worth uh, really tracking that stuff. Um, because we, you know, I, I know as a DM, I don't pay that much attention to magic items because it's not like part of the story. It's not part of the bigger thing. And it's just, you know, but it really matters to character. It matters to players. So, and, and it isn't like leveling where I don't have to pay attention to leveling other than to tell them they leveled. I don't think about what spells are going to get or what new abilities are going to get. I, they, they worry about that and I get to see it as it happens at the table. But um, magic items, they don't get. You know, so we'll roll randomly and stuff like that. But sometimes, like, a player will be like, man, all I wanted was a freaking Cloak of Protection. I never got one the whole game. And you're like, oh, man, I totally forgot. You know, I forgot you wanted that. So um, you don't want to, like, necessarily give them the one thing they want. Like, if they're min-maxing their character, you don't have to do that. But if you ask, like, what are you generally interested in? Are you interested in armor? Are you interested in weapons? What kind of weapons are, are good for you? You know, one guy's already got them. I think they're all, like, decked out in magic items. Um so I don't really think they need much, but you know, it's always good to to, to get an idea of what they've got. And and if you haven't given a magic item in a while, then then you know, might be a might be a good time. 
Um, yeah, so uh, SJ behind the screen says that uh, uh, they made a spreadsheet for magic items that the party has and compare it actually to the XGTE. I don't know what, the, oh, the Xanathar's Guide. Is there a Xanathar's Guide chart for magic item distribution? Uh, that there is. Take a look. Xanathar's Guide. And Xanathar's Guide's got a lot of great stuff. Um, Dice Camera Fan has a 3x5 card with a little picture on the back of a magic item. That's really good. That's also high prep. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, and it matters, and people will like it. So it's probably one of those things that's worth preparing because it matters so much. It's more than I'm willing to do. Uh, awarding magic items. That. Um, page one. I don't have the book. I'm on D&D &D Beyond. Uh, yeah, is it this chart? Like the number of magic items per the major items? Is that per character? I presume this is per character. I don't think I ever read this at this table. Um, oh, look at that. Man, you know, here's a whole section in Xanathar's Guide, and I missed it. I didn't read this whole thing. So I'm not going to sit here and read it while you guys are hanging around. <laughs> but thank you for that. I got to bookmark that. I've been reading a lot of Morden Canids, but I really ought to read that DM stuff for, for Xanathar's Guide. I don't know why I missed that. Pardon me while I drink on screen. Um, uh what else all right so let's get into today's game so who are the characters we have warren warren is our gnome druid who wants to be a big beast uh warren is real excited to hit level six because he can then turn into a level two a cr2 monster and uh we'll have to find like the biggest cr2 monster oh yes i know sorry cat needs attention um Punchy, the Kenku Samurai. Um, I don't know that there's any sort of interesting plot threads with, with the Kenku. Nothing jumps right out at me. Uh, Smoke, the Tabaxi Ranger and Rogue. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to tie. Maybe Smoke has a, a sister, Raindrop, um, that uh, is now part of the... Uh, I think that might be cool. Uh, Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel, boy. And so it's no longer Gabriel. He has another name. Um, I have time to rip it out. Sorry about the crinkly. So if you don't carry one of these around, I always keep a uh, piece of paper that I write all my junk down on. I have this was designed for lazy. I'm sorry for fantastic locations. It's a one-page reference sheet. This is the kind of thing we're going to expand out uh, in the uh, lazy DM workbook. So Gabriel is now Tharmond. And uh, die, uh, uh, different soul. So Gabriel and Tharmond are one person that has two sort of sets of memories and one soul from an elf from long ago, uh, who I believe is a bard now. Um, uh, we have Ogechi, the Shadow Magic Human Sorcerer slash Warlock, who is tied to uh, who's tied to the Ashoto. Can sit there and meow at me? Out. Uh, and Huitzelin, the Paladin of Ubtau. Uh, a couple people can't make it today, so I think we only have four of the six today. Uh, a gelatinous cube is a CR2 monster, yet not a beast. So what is the largest um, beast, you know, beast creature? Strong start. So they are, I think they're thinking about heading to, um, uh, they are heading to the mines. Uh, those are the... What? Where'd you go? I can't even see you. 
He like, what are you doing on the chair? Um, they are going to, uh, there, jump to, where are you going? You don't want to hang out? Everyone wants to see you. Oh, what is it? Ow. What's milk? She's, she hasn't started eating regular food yet. You have to give her like baby kitten form. And uh, Quicks of Coddle, huh? Giant constrictor snake, giant elk. I really wish there was a great big CR2 dinosaur. Really needs it because he's not. I don't know if we're going to hit ninth. It'd be great if you could find a great big CR2 dinosaur. Um, uh, so what is the name? Um, second. Uh, we are going to ends of jolt. Jolt. There is a mine. Mine is not a good word to look. Um. Look at this map here. There we go. That's what I need. Uh, they are uh, Hrackhammer. They're headed to. And isn't uh, Hrackhammer and Wormheart Mine are sort of connected, right? Uh, the Allosaurus. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So Allosaurus will be his new thing that he can change into. That's great. Thank you, guys. Um, so if I recall, in Hrackhammer... There's Tinder, right? Wormheart Mine. Um, Tinder, I believe, is the dragon that everybody was worried like level ones are going to run into. The young red dragon. What's the CR on a young red? Uh, young red is... Wow, challenge 10. Okay, so, so that's pretty good. Um, so I think they're going to see Tinder, right? Um, that'll be a nice, scary thing. And I think the, uh, what are you doing? I'm going to push it. Don't, don't push that around. Eat that. Like water bottle. Here, eat a pencil. Enjoy a pencil. Um, so I think that, and, and do I recall that Wormheart Mine and Crackhammer are connected? So I think that when we talk about what scenes might take place, uh, So real loosely, I, I don't think I'm in any big hurry. So I guess the next adventure is coming out in September and it's currently June. So about three-ish months left and I don't mind going for a little while. Um, so uh, they don't have to finish right away, but I think we're going to start to get them. I think the main problem is leveling. I've been holding back their levels because they're doing too much. I'm going to knock that off the desk. Little stubby tail. Um, so we'll see what they want to do. If they want to head straight to Omu, that'd be fine. And if they want to go deal with the dwarves, um, and Wormheart Mine, that will be fine too. Um, I'll have to find some cool magic item that they can, they can, that they can deal with there. Uh, so let's add a couple of Tinder, uh.
let's take a look at so this is Wormheart, right? A client of Shield Dwarves operated this iron mine that put the 40 years ago and was conquered by a young or a dragon named Zindalore. Let's grab that name. Um So that's Wormheart, but then we also have Rackhammer. Ah, passage to Hack Rackhammer. Elevated cart track enters the tunnel. Um, Iron Newts. How bad are they? They're pretty low challenge rating. That's okay. So they'll have an easy time with one section and then a harder time with another. Uh, I think these fire, the, the higher ones are more powerful. Yeah, even they're not too bad. Beef them up a little bit. You know the kind of thing you can just sort of max their hit points out, double the amount of damage they do, and they suddenly become a lot more deadly. Um... The cat is attacking. So as I'm talking, the cat is attacking uh, my mouse cursor and also the thing that's jumping up and down as I speak. I'm trying to bite the monitor. It's going to hurt my monitor. I have a new 4K monitor. Um, so Harakrimer and Wormheart Mine, I think, are going to be the uh, Fire Newts. Kobolds. There are salamanders, right? Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? What are you doing there? Little monster. Oh, she's so fluffy. You're so fluffy. Sorry, cats. Yes, I love cats. We had a dog. We lost our dog, Jebu, um, a few weeks ago. It was very sad. We'd had him for 12 years. Best dog I've ever had. And um, so now my, my wife works, or she uh, volunteers at a um, uh, at the local animal shelter. And we are on the list to uh, foster dogs and cats. And Friday she said, hey, I'm going to go get some cats. And she came back. And we, had a few cats with we have my office here. Our office is a perfect place to sort of have animals there. You don't want to run around the rest of the house. What fantastic locations might they explore? So we already have all Hrackhammer and Wormheart Mine and Omu and stuff, but let's, on their journey, let's just randomly generate a... Uh, uh, lost Monuments of Cholt. Floating oozing tower of Shagambi the Kamadan. Uh, that sounds kind of cool. Crumbling arcane altar of the Terrafolk. They've dealt with uh, ivy-colored watery skull of a Sarak. Buried radiant pool of Merkel. Lift lightning rock. Stop it! What are you doing? You're scratching my monitor. Just attacking it. She's vicious. Uh, oh, let's see. A couple of these are pretty. Oozing Tower. I think they dealt with an oozing tower before. I think it might have been the other. Ruined trapped pillar of the Arakokra. Desecrated poisonous ruin of Oblika. Um... So these are just, so why do we do these? Um, when we're running some random encounters, it's always kind of neat to run a random encounter around a monument of sorts. And monuments also act as a good way to reveal a secret or clue. They can discover something there. And there can always be sort of a treasure that's involved. So this is just a random 
generator. Um, on Slot, Lost Monuments of Cholt, it's called. You can Google it. You'll find the article. And it randomly generates. It uses four lists, uh, like a state, you know, like a current state, a magical effect, a thing, and a patron. And it randomly throws these together, and you get these really crazy, you know, really crazy monuments. Um, they're better done ahead of time because, as you can see, some of them are dumb. Ancient Thunderous Tomb of Unk the Flail Snail. Kind of cool. A lot of times they end up being statues instead of whatever they say. Like, I don't want to do a tomb because there's already a tomb of Unk in um, Omo. So, uh, statue. Uh, these are just things to wrap random encounters around so that there's some kind of texture to the area. Uh, I love it. I, I love these things. I think, I think fantastic. You know, a few fantastic locations are. Really uh, so I already have NPCs. So what monsters are they going to face? Well, the random random stuff. Um, yes, kitty. No, you're not supposed to bite the microphone stand because I'm sure that echoes into the microphone. That does not understand the importance of good quality audio. Um, stop it! I'm making a lot of noise. Random stuff. Uh, and then all the other ones. Fire newts, salamanders. I think they're salamanders, right? So let's... Uh, I guess there's no salamanders, but the salamanders are something we can add because I think salamanders are pretty hard. Uh, salamanders, I think, are high CR. I see our, uh, why is it, why is this taking so long? Hope I'm not disconnected. Looks like I'm still on. Maybe on was a little slow. Salamander. Wow, CR5. So these guys are tough. So a couple of salamanders are good. What's their story? Fire snakes from the elemental plane of fire. So they're really um, elementally sort of creatures. Oh. They're really sort of elemental creatures, but um, uh, I think they will work well. In this. They could be sort of the commanders of the fire newts. What? More pats? Um, so those are the monsters. And I think magic items, I'm mostly going to ask questions. They just got magic items. They've, they've gotten a lot of salamander. I don't have any salamander mini ring. I don't really... Um, that's a pretty good, uh, yeah. So the idea that they'll actually get to see Tinder and they can decide, do I have a cat butt in my face? Is that a butt? That's a, not a nice. Um, not by my Curran, the cat. Um, So I think that start of seeing the red dragon and then the Albany dwarves know about Tinder and probably didn't want to say anything. Um, and maybe there's some powerful magic item there. Uh, where are you going? Real bad place. Here. That's on the back of my chair and has texture. Oh. I don't want you to. Right there. That could be fun. Uh, I think the idea that like maybe there's a magic item that he's uh, that they've got what would be a good, fun magic item. 
uh, that he's protecting um, something fiery. Cool. I would say the flame tongue. Uh, so the party will enter the mine. Did I miss why they would do that? Uh, so they, they're doing it because they rescued some dwarves and the dwarves asked for help and they said, if you do this, we will set up a, um, we'll set up mining trade and your city here, your, your little fort will become really a, quite an economic powerhouse. If you have a dwarven mine at your back, that's sort of mining silver and iron. Uh, so that's one big reason is sort of the, this economic benefit. Um, I feel like Blofeld. Or bomb. Um, but I want to entice them with a magic item too. So I don't know what that'll be. Yeah, commerce. But I think like the idea that like there's a powerful sort of like the Arkenstone from the Hobbit. The Arkenstone in the original Hobbit movie or book. They mine too deep and too greedily. Um, a frost brand would be nice, but they have tons of swords. I think it might be time for like a maybe a wand of fireballs would be pretty. They already cast fireball. A staff of power. The staff of power too crazy powerful. I think it's really quite a quite a. Very rare. Um, yeah, a suit of plate armor. Fiery plate armor might be pretty good. I'm trying to think of like something that they could hear about. A legendary staff. You know. Um, uh, this is pretty powerful. Probably too much. Um, staff of fire, right? Yeah, I think a staff of fire might be nice. That'd be good for our our caster type who doesn't really have anything. Um, I don't necessarily have to uh, define it now either. Yeah, the staff of fire is good. It's not as powerful as the staff of power, but it's pretty great. And you know, yeah. It's on par with their power level too. So I think that that would be might be in terms of a um, Oh, this could be cool. What if Tinder has learned how to use the staff? Right? So now you got a wizard, you've got a a dragon that wields a staff. Might be cool. Um, I think that would be a good. One. We'll just say a treasure, including a powerful, powerful artifact. Um, so I think that this works. I'm pretty happy with where we are at. Uh, I think I'm prepared to run the game. This one's a little bit more open because they, they're, they're kind of just in their town and they're going to explore. They'll see the dragon and then they'll decide where they want to go. They can either go to the mines or they can skip the mines. They can go straight to Omu if they feel like going to Omu. They'll we'll do some uh, hex crawl, you know, fun hex crawling uh, on their way from... They're at the anchorage right now. They're up here. And they're going to go down to Omu. Oh, and they'll probably get to the Wreck of the Star Goddess on the way. So that's probably something to find. Um, and the Wreck of the Star Goddess is a good time to include new potential characters. So new, new player characters. Oh, we need the attention. Other ones are some. Um... They can find new characters in the Wreck of the Star God. Oh, you're hitting the space bar. Um, they can uh, find new um, new PCs there if they want. Uh, or they can be hirelings that they picked up in Port 9 Zara the last time they are there. So they can 
depending on what they want to do. Those are a couple of options. Um, but that's a, a good way for them to have the backup character. So this is something new that I'm putting in because I'm worried about wiping out characters in um, uh, in the Tomb of the Nine Gods itself. I don't want to have to put gloves on and killing characters that have been around for a long time would be sad. So that can happen, but also uh, them having some backup characters so that they're ready to jump in with a character will work fine. That's where we kind of stand. Um, do you guys have any thoughts or questions? Uh, anything not real clear about why we're doing what we're doing? Do you guys see something that we're missing? Like, how can you possibly run a game and not do X? Uh, what are your What are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, and anything else about D and D? You want any other Any other interesting? I think my my plan right now is to continue to run Tomb of Annihilation until. Um, uh, the uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist uh, comes out, and then I will run that for my Sunday group. My Wednesday group actually play tested it, so we'll probably do something else there, or they'll they'll take a little longer in, in Tomb of Annihilation. Um, but I have not done anything with um, uh, I have not done anything with the Undermountain stuff. I've never I didn't know it was happening, so I'm I'm excited to see the Undermountain. Um, I'm excited to see the Undermountain stuff. Uh, unrelated to this directly, but thoughts on uh, Stream of Many Eyes. I thought it was great, Trey. Uh, I think I was watching it, and I loved like the little musical interludes, and I loved the live play. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I think that that's a, a neat way to do it. It felt like Gen Con. It felt like they kind of went through and talked about a bunch of products, and people are all sort of dressed in character, and they sort of recreated a, a, a street of Waterdeep, and that was neat. The interviews are really good. Uh, I only watched a couple of the streaming games. I only watched little pieces of them. So I watched a little bit of, um, of Matt Mercer's streaming game. thought that was really cool. So I think that's a neat way for them to do a product announcement. I know everyone's like, well, what about doing conventions? But a lot of people don't get to the conventions. So um, this is a way for everybody to just open up on Twitch. It's all free, right? Just go and enjoy a couple, you know, two or three days. I think it's fantastic. I think there's a little bit of like, man, I sure wish I was there. Um, but, you know, I told my wife yesterday, I'm like, I would rather be here watching it with her than there without her. So, you know, the truth is we're, we're happy where we are and I'm happy where we are. And, and I can't wait for the products. I'm really excited about them. So how much of the module do you read for this? I try to read the whole thing. The, I'm li I'd be lying if I said I've read everything, but I read a good deal of Tomb of Annihilation. I haven't gone like room by room through the Tomb of the Nine Gods itself. Uh, the cat approves, yes. Um, uh, I haven't read the uh, the Tomb of the Nine Gods itself, but I've read everything else, and I recommend reading the whole adventure. It says it right in the beginning. Read this whole adventure through, and I think it's a good. I think if you're running one, I think it's a. I think it's a good idea to try to try to read the whole thing all the way through. Um. Well, guys, I'm going to take off. Uh, it's time for me to pack up and go to my game. I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, rest of your uh, weekend. Do some fun stuff. Up, oh, cats in the litter box. Um, and I will see you guys again in a week. Thank you all on Twitch for coming. Uh, thank you all on YouTube for watching, and I will see you again soon.